Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a 61-year-old male with shoulder pain. I showed the same patient earlier having uh, evidence of possible impingement, and now I'm going to talk about their rotator cuff tear. So this is a sagittal PD, I'm sorry, sagittal stir image rather, and we can see that there's a fluid here along the front of the rotator cuff. Here's the back, top, and then the supraspinatus and subscapularis tendons. Instead of seeing nice and dark tendons, we see this fluid filling the spaces. So they have a full thickness tear, large tear, involving the subscapularis tendon attachment. This is the lesser tuberosity right here, the cortex. And instead of seeing that nice dark tendon going all the way around, we see fluid, so a ruptured subscapularis tendon. Now we're going to look at this on the axial images and find that subscapularis tendon tear. So this is the humeral head the glenoid, here's the back, here's the front. So this is the subscapularis muscle region here. So a severe atrophy of the muscle. Instead of seeing a nice big bright muscle, like bright signal like this, it's dark and very, very small. So severe subscapularis muscle atrophy. And you say, wait a second, look at this. I see the tendon just fine. There's the tendon that goes over here. But this is not the whole tendon. The tendon that attaches to the lesser tuberosity right here is torn and gone but there is a superficial component that doesn't attach to the lesser tuberosity. It goes over the top here, and it comes over and attaches on the greater tuberosity. And you say, wait a second, I see something here. This must be the subscapularis tendon here. Well, this is another fake out. So this is not the subscapularis tendon. This is the biceps tendon. So the biceps tendon, if we follow this up to the top, we see the labrum here. This is the biceps tendon coming off right there going forward there, going forward. So the biceps tendon is dislocated medially and it courses right across the lesser tuberosity, right where we would suspect or expect to see the subscapularis tendon attach. Normally the biceps would be right here. So, so well, how does this happen? So the subscapularis tendon has a broad attachment on the lesser tuberosity. It's his main job, but it also may contribute to fibers of this band. There's a band that goes over the top of the bicipital groove. It's called the transverse ligament. It goes from the greater tuberosity across to the lesser tuberosity. It forms a roof and it holds the biceps tendon in place. And the subscapularis tendon has some fibers that contribute to that transverse ligament. So whenever the, the subscapularis tendon is ruptured and yanked backwards, the deep fibers that attach to the subscapular, uh, the lesser tuberosity and to the uh, over here on the bony attachment of the transverse ligament are pulled back and now the only thing remaining are the superficial fibers that go over to the greater tuberosity. So the biceps tendon now is no longer bounded. It can slip right out of there because those deep fibers are torn from the lesser tuberosity. The biceps tendon can dislocate medially just like in this case and again those deep fibers of the subscapularis that attach to the lesser tuberosity, the bone, they're yanked back and atrophy, and you're left with this little linear band that is a superficial component that doesn't even attach here on the lesser tuberosity at all. So a uh, case of a uh, ruptured and uh, retracted subscapularis tendon from the lesser tuberosity, the transverse ligament component uh, is intact and goes over the top of the groove to attach to the greater tuberosity, and the biceps tendon is dislocated medially and courses over the lesser tuberosity. So interesting case, and thank you very much.